Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup with Coach Jim Littell. I'm your host, Casey Kendrick. And, Coach, let's talk about this last week. You go down to Waco, Texas. You had a, a, a really good outing, a solid performance backing up the previous week. You get the win against KU. And as we're going to look at those games specifically coming up, but individually and now collectively looking at where you guys are, it was a good week, and it's put you in another great situation going into the following week. Well, we competed at, at Baylor, and uh, there's a reason Baylor's number three in the country. Great ball club. They they have all the pieces to the puzzle. They got great size with Kalani Brown inside. Their guard plays very good. Christy Wallace is one of the most experienced players in this league. So we're down by four with about six minutes to go, and uh, it kind of got away from us. And as you know, I'm not into – attaboy victories or playing people close, but I thought our, our kids went in and competed hard for 40 minutes. So again, now you're tied for third going into the week, and the big picture is we still don't know how many wins it'll take to get to the NCAA tournament. Is it nine? Is it 10? Is it 11? So there's still some angst, even though, and I mean among all the teams that are anywhere from three through about six right now. Well, there's no question that that's a correct statement. Uh, I think you could look at Baylor and Texas being in right now, and uh, everybody else is, is fighting for their lives. Uh, uh, TCU's uh, in a good situation right now because they've got three road wins, and that's always big within this league. You know, TCU comes in, though, Coach, tougher on their RPI. Their non-conference wasn't, uh, didn't carry them as much. Your non-conference, we got to think at some point, if you can get the final standings correctly, then your RPI ranking should really help you. Your non-conference right now is looking really good. It, it does. Uh, there were some that we factored in as being in the 200s, 250s the year before and they dropped into the 300s. So that hurt us a little bit, but you know, we, we tried to play a challenging schedule by playing Tennessee and UCLA and Mi Mississippi State. So uh, I think at the end of the day, that'll help us. Coach, this week, uh, real quickly, before we jump into highlights and a little package with Ron Thulin coming up, uh, J.C. Littell was asked to the prom by one Landry Gum, and she accepted it. Uh, a lot of people know that story. Thousands of people literally have, uh, have, have followed that story online a little bit. That was a special moment at the game the other day. It was. I was very proud of her, and uh, Landry's a, a special young man that's grown up around cowgirl basketball with his dad being a radio announcer for 28 years for us. So uh, it, it was a special night. It kind of caught her off guard, and she was smiling and laughing, and I think Landry was really happy as well. So a neat moment for for our kids. It was. Neat moment for the program, neat moment for the kids, for sure, and a lot of interest from Cowgirl fans. Let's take a break. Let's come back. We'll talk about what happened down in Waco, Texas. We'll do that coming up as we continue with the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. The Cowgirl Basketball Roundup with Jim Littell is brought to you by Bud Light, proud friends of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the visit stillwater.org. Shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OGE, power at the speed of life. Hi, I am Coach Gundy with Oklahoma State University. With approximately 900 Oklahomans waiting for a life saving transplant, I encourage everyone across the state to make the important decision to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. So check your driver's license for the Little Red Heart. If it's not there, visit lifeshareok.org and join the registry today. I have the Little Red Heart. Do you? Welcome back to the show. Casey Kendrick along with Coach Jim Mattel. And Coach, let's talk real quickly going in. You, you talked about how good this team is for uh, for Baylor. Not only Christy Wallace and Kalani Brown, but you know, the Lauren Cox kid. The combination of their front court is so big, it is almost impossible to out-rebound this basketball team. They're very efficient in what they do. I, I told people after in the press conference that they're, they're kind of like the old Green Bay Packers. They only do about six things 
but they do it extremely well. They do it very well. Let's take a look at the highlights in this one. And Coach, uh, they were they were fired up down there. But what I liked is that your team was fired up too. This was we talk about opportunities against a team like this. Your team answered the challenge all the way through the the midway through the fourth quarter. We did, and and uh, you see uh, Mandy pulling up and hitting a nice three and. Uh, we ran some good things. We, we tried to take Kalani Brown away from the basket because we knew she was a very uh, strong shot blocker. Went to a lot of pick and pop action like you see there. So we did a good job of changing our game plan a little bit and, and uh, I thought it was beneficial. But at the end of the night, we just didn't hit enough shots. Our, our top three scores went. 11 for 41, and you've got to you've got to shoot the ball better to beat Baylor. Obviously, down by two at the end of one, and you saw the challenge. There's a couple of challenges inside. One thing you need to note: Kalani Brown wasn't in the game during either of those plays. She's just such a difference maker. She is, and uh, I think she's probably the best post player in the country right now, and uh, and probably a first team All American without any doubt. You guys hung in there, Coach. You, you, you know, Tasha Jones on the ground right here. Good job by Gentry Holt. You stayed out of foul trouble with with Kaylee, but Mandy got hampered quickly, and that changed the game plan for you guys. It just makes us a lot smaller, you know, when we have to have to come in with Tosh. And Tosh did a great job, though. I thought it was the best game that she's had since she's uh, she's been here at Oklahoma State. Uh, Played well defensively, hit some key shots, and uh, gave us a big boost off the bench. Right on cue, you see her hit one of three threes in that ball game was really big for you guys. And you know, coach, you have to do that right there. You have to hit threes, and you guys were hitting threes in this night. We did for a while, and then uh, we got a little bit cold, but uh, uh, we got the shots that we wanted and and uh, they just didn't seem to go down late in the game. Coach, the other thing you guys did a great job running the floor, filling the lane by Castro and then the pass across. And But the other thing is, Coach, I mean, we're, we're halfway into the third quarter right now and Baylor's well below their 88-point average. We did a good job uh, defensively and uh, Coach Malky talked after the game how it was such a hard-fought game and, and uh, there we take a charge and uh, the kids stuck to the game plan and did a really nice job. Again, you see what Kalani Brown does. She forces you to back it out, but if you can knock down some mid-range jumpers, you're in the ball game. And coach from a six-point halftime deficit to only four at the end of three. Very much in this ball game. We played really solid, and uh, yeah, and, you know, there's another uh, nice kick out and and staying with the game plan on it. But it got away from us a little bit at the end, and didn't hit some shots that we needed to hit. Coach, you talked about it. Uh, this is a team that uh, doesn't, it's not exotic. It's not exactly difficult to figure out. They're just so good at what they do, it's almost impossible to stop them doing it. It is, and, and you see we were within six with about six to go here, and uh, uh, they found Chow in the, the corner, and she hit down a couple big threes. Uh, where we got caught in a bad rotation. They don't like to start to rely on threes. They're obviously capable of hitting them. But your game plan made them very uncomfortable. Well, th they were averaging nearly 90 points a game, and their margin of victory was 32 at home. So uh, I think we did some things that, that got them out of their comfort zone a little bit and uh, forced them to play a different way. But uh, when you got that kind of talent, uh, there were other people that stepped up and made shots. And uh, you saw the Chow kid hit us, hit us with a couple threes late in the ball game. No doubt. Well, Baylor undefeated at home, undefeated in the Big 12. That meant the Cowgirls needed to go back home and get a win against Kansas. We got the highlights from that one after this. back once again to the show Casey Kendrick along with coach Jim Latelli coach let's talk about the the game with Kansas going into this one first off Kansas had been playing terrific defense I think they were third in the in the uh, conference and points allowed coach Snyder's team was continuing to play very hard you knew this was going to be a dog fight just like it was in Waco his teams play extremely hard uh, I believe going in the game they were third in points allowed they were third in field goal percentage so they're very solid on the defensive end of the floor. They make you earn everything. And uh, we were probably the best we've been offensively in a long time of moving the ball, 
Uh, Lowe did a great job of distributing the ball and, and sharing the ball and getting it where it needed to be. And there was a great balance in the, in the game of an inside-outside game along with having five people in double figures. Well, that was the key, the offense. Let's take a look at the highlights in this one. And from the time you came out of the smoke and the tunnel, it was play for K-Day and a, a pink out night at Gallagher Iva Arena, and you guys were on offensively. And it was obvious early on, Coach, that young lady's going to touch the ball almost every single offensive possession. We uh, wanted to make sure that she got a lot of touches, and uh, she was very efficient in the game. She was 8 for 13 and then 7 set for 7 from the line. So I uh, thought she, uh, she really did a nice job. Lowe did a good job of, of getting to the rim finding people in, in space, uh, finding Jaden Hobbs, uh, seeing a nice steal by low or run out basket. You know, Coach, the, you know, lots of times we may see, and, and this is, again, just what she does, why she is number one in the conference in getting steals. She anticipates that pass so well. Again, another steal out of a zone, which you guys have been very effective of. But it wasn't the, it wasn't the balanced scoring from a standpoint that one kid had 26 and everybody else had 9, 10, 11, 12. Everyone was in that 12 to 14, 15 range. The number of shots were very distributed. This may have been the most balanced you guys have been all year. Well, I don't think there's any question on that and, and uh, we did a good job of getting to the free throw line and making free throws as well. Um, Braxton had four threes, shot it really well from the perimeter. Jaden had four threes and uh, when you have that type of balance in the scoring and uh, the production inside and out, it's going to be a successful night. Felt like, Coach, in this game, you guys shared the basketball really well. I think 19 of 31 uh, shots made buckets came off of assist. Uh, this was, a again, not just scoring an offense and balance, but seeing the floor and sharing the ball very well. It, it was, and uh, one thing I was pleased with in this game, we did a lot better job of scoring, executing on inbounds plays. We kind of got away from that. That's always been a little bit of a trademark for our program, and I was glad to see us get back and find some buckets on uh, baseline out-of-bounds plays. Great job of not giving up by Braxton Miller, missing the layup, but then fighting for the rebound. And the and one opportunity right here. Coach, you guys, again, and something else before I get to that point, speaking of the free throws, man, you guys have lately have been phenomenal from the free throw line. It's been good. Uh, our players seem to be relaxed there, and. Uh, uh, stepping up with a great deal of confidence and uh, those uh, free throws will win you games. And those will too and she can get hot and Jaden Hobbs coach you know she she got a couple in a row right here and that's what you guys have been looking for for quite some time. It is and and uh, you can uh, uh, hold uh, low directly responsible for that because she got in gaps and, and made them lose their ball line and Jaden was spotted up and did a nice job of, of knocking shots down. Yeah, going back to sharing the basketball very well. Coach, in this one, it, it felt like they were going to hang in there for a little bit, and then you open it up to 10, then to 15. They'd get it to 11, you get it back to 15, 11, 15, kind of went that way all night long. They never really made that huge run that often teams make in, in the Big 12. No, they didn't. And uh, uh, I think when you run good offense, and are getting a good shot at the basket every time down. It's it's more difficult for teams to come back when you're being very productive on the offensive end. And that's just ball movement. Coach, you yell all the time, move it, move it, move it, and you say reverse it when you're talking about move it. That's a prime example. It is, and, and that's what we need to do to be successful. It's, it's harder to get double teams to Kaylee. Uh, when you change sides of the floor and constantly reverse the ball. You talked about inbounds plays. You get a wide open look at the mid post. Lauren Goodwin, another conversion at the at the line. And coach, you guys made a lot of substitutions late and uh, you maintained that intensity. Had a lot of young ladies not necessarily scoring, but playing hard off the bench. So this one never had that ugly lull that sometimes a lopsided game has. No, and, and you had Tasha Jones come off the bench and get six rebounds, and uh, that's the type of production. We don't always have to have scoring, but we've got to get some production on those kids coming into the game. Lauren Goodwin has produced all year long, and we're going to get a chance to sit down and hear from Ron Thulin, one of the broadcasters for Fox Sports Network, his thoughts on Lauren Goodwin. That after the break.
Welcome back to the John Girl Basketball Roundup. And this week's feature, we get a chance to hear from an outside perspective. Ron Thulin, Fox Sports broadcaster, has seen Lauren Goodwin play at almost every stop she's had. He's very high on this young lady. In fact, here's some thoughts from Ron Thulin. Well, I first saw Lauren when she was at North Texas. And I remember turning to the person I was doing the game with and saying, you know, this, this girl should be playing at a bigger school. No offense to North Texas. And then I lose track of her, and I know she got Conference USA Freshman of the Year, and, and then all of a sudden I'm doing a UTSA game last year, and I'm going, is that the same girl that was in North Texas? And she was heads above everybody, and she gets Newcomer of the Year, and of course she wins you know, an honor in the Big East. She could win another honor in the Big 12, which she probably will this season, but she is just a player that catches your eye because she doesn't back down, she doesn't hesitate, she plays 40 minutes of basketball, and a lot of times you don't see that, but it's been fun watching her, and I can't wait to call one of her games on this level because I think this is the level she should have been the whole time. Well, Coach, Ron, very high on, on Low Goodwin for good reason. You look at the big picture, Lowe's had an incredible year, uh, both scoring the basketball, uh, defending, getting it where it needs to be, and, and helping her team win games. So, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people around the country very impressed with her, and I, I definitely believe she's going to have a chance to play at the next level and, and be very productive there. Maybe the hardest question I've ever asked you, what is she best at? I mean, she's number one in steals. She's fantastic in scoring. She's fantastic in uh, distributing the basketball, her leadership. What's her best attribute? You know, I've always been partial to scoring point guards. You know, when you can get an Andrea Riley or a Tiffany Bias and you can get point production at every position, that's what makes you special and Lowe can score the basketball. She helps make this team special and trying to make this season special as well. Let's take our final break. We'll come back, talk about what's coming up for the Cowgirls, and we'll wrap it up right after this. Welcome back for the final time for the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. And Coach, this week, a chance to go avenge a game. You guys have not lost the front end of a two-game series many times this year, but Iowa State got you earlier this year. Now a chance to go up there to one of the toughest places in the country to play and try to avenge that loss. Hilton Coliseum is a, a very difficult place to play. They, they always have one of the top crowds in the country. Uh, Bridget Carlton, uh, Went crazy on us last time, getting 39 points. So we'll have to make some adjustments, do a better job of guarding her and Emily Durr this time around. And uh, he's got them playing extremely well. They came off of a huge win at K-State where they won by about 35. So uh, you knew it was just a matter of time before Coach Finley got his team playing better. And then back at home against uh, Baylor and Gallagher Iva, that's a Tuesday night game. And, you know, another tough ball game, obviously, Coach, but you played them close. You had a great game plan. And with the crowd, who knows? You know, uh, that's why you play the game. And, and uh, uh, we uh, always shoot the basketball a little bit better at home, so we're looking for uh, big things in both these games. Looking forward to that. Again, the Cowgirls this week will be at Iowa State 7 o'clock on Saturday, and then Tuesday night they'll return home to take on Baylor inside Gallagher Iva Arena. Hey, that's going to do it for us. Our thanks to Ron Thulin for stopping in. Our thanks to you for hanging out with us as well. For Coach Jim Littell, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you next week right here on the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. The Cowgirl Basketball Roundup with Jim Littell is brought to you by Bud Light, proud friends of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the VisitStillwater.org, shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OG&E, power at the speed of life.